Greetings, Earthlings. Today we bring you Geometric Optics. This PowerPoint podcast is brought to you by Cthulhu, the destroyer of the worlds who will rise from the oceans to lay waste to mankind. Let us begin. A ray of light is an extremely narrow beam of light. When you're talking about light rays, we're just talking about one little chunk of that light. We know that light goes everywhere and everywhere in infinite amount of directions. All visible objects emit or reflect light rays in all directions, like so. Our eyes then detect the light rays, like so. All those light rays go in through the lens in our eye. We think we see objects, but what we really see are images. We're just seeing the projection of that object, which is an image. Images are formed when light rays converge. Converge means they come together, and we can see that these light rays are converging inside of our eye, and that's how images are formed. When light rays go straight into our eyes, we see an image in the same spot as the object. So the light rays go into the eye, and we're seeing the image of that object right where that object is. However, it is possible to see images when converging, converging light rays reflect off of mirrors. Here we have a vase, and here we have the image of a vase. For some terms, reflection is when light changes direction by bouncing off a surface. Here, our surface is a mirror. Light ray is going to bounce. The light ray coming in is the incident ray. The light ray going out is the reflected ray. The normal line is an imaginary line which lies at right angles to the mirror where the ray hits it. So the normal line can be drawn anywhere. It's always going to be right where this incident ray hits it. And it's going to be perpendicular to the surface it's hitting. Perpendicular means 90 degrees, hence right angle. When light is reflected off a mirror, it hits the mirror at the same angle, which we call theta i, i for incidence, the incidence angle, as it reflects off the mirror. And we call that reflected angle, or here, uh, theta sub r. Or on the drawing, there we go. Incident i reflected r. These angles are going to be equal. Mirrors reflect light rays. I'm sure we've all looked in a mirror before and seen our reflection in it. It's actually reflecting the light that's bouncing off of our face, hitting the mirror, and we're seeing that image. So how do we see images in mirrors? Light from the object, the yellow lines, reflects off the mirror, the blue guy, and converges to form an image. Now the image in a regular mirror is over here. It's not going to be where the object is because we're seeing a reflection. So we perceive all light rays as if they come straight from an object. So what we actually perceive is this image, perceiving the light rays as if they came straight from here and into our eye, even though originally they came from this side and reflected off that. The imaginary light rays that we think we see are called sight lines. So these dash, these uh, dash dotted lines here are sight lines. So we have two different kinds of images. We have real images that are formed by light rays. That's when we look at the object directly in the image in the same place as the object. So if we're looking through a window, we're seeing real images because the light rays just go right through the window. But in mirrors, well, lots of mirrors, we do see some real images with certain types of mirrors. But the typical one that you have in your bathroom or in your bedroom, we're actually seeing virtual images. And these images are formed by the sight line. It's as if we're looking at an image that's beyond the mirror, like behind the mirror, like through the looking glass, Alice. There's different types of mirrors, as I said. First one's the easy one. We're gonna talk about plane or flat mirrors. Images are virtual. They're formed by sight lines and uprights. They're virtual because it's not the real object we're looking at. We're just looking at the image. Objects are not magnified. The object height, which we call HO for object, equals the image height, HI. 
So HO equals HI, there's no magnification. Object distance, which we label DO, equals image distance, which we label DI. So the distance from the object to the mirror is the same as the distance from the mirror to its image. There's also spherical mirrors. We have two different kinds of these, concave and convex. The concave or convex, it's just a part of a sphere. So imagine this is a huge like mirrored ball. We're only talking about one chunk of it. Uh, and concave, think of an actual cave like in the side of a hill, goes in. So this one would be a concave mirror. If it's angled the other way, it look like it'd be a convex mirror. And you've probably seen these in um, maybe like grocery stores or gas stations. They have them like in the corner, or so people can like see objects that are actually around corners. It's kind of weird how they work, but they do work. So when we are talking about concave and convex mirrors, there's going to be some labels that we're going to have to understand. Here, C is the center point of the sphere. R is the radius of curvature, which is basically just the radius of the sphere. F is the focal point of the mirror lens, and we find that it's halfway between the C and the sphere. So it's basically just half the radius. And the focal distance, the actual length of this, is just, as I said, the radius divided by 2. So radius divided by 2 gives us half the radius, which is little f here, the focal distance. And concave mirrors, caved in, like I said, caves in like this. Light rays come in, and they bounce off. So light rays that come in parallel to the optical axis, parallel, reflect through the focal points. So they all come in parallel, but they're all going to meet at that focal point. So here's an example. The first light ray comes in parallel to the optical axis and reflects through the focal points. The second light ray is going to go directly through the focal points and then come off parallel to the mirror, or sorry, parallel to the optical axis. And the image is formed where these two intersect. So we're looking at the top of this candle here. So where these two reflected light rays intersect, that's going to be the top of the candle. And we can see here that it's upside down. Now concave mirrors, in this case, forms a real image. It's real because it's on this side of the mirror. If it was on the other side of the mirror, it'd be virtual. But since it's on the same side as the object, we get a real image. However, if we put the candle inside the focal point, some different stuff happens. First ray still comes in parallel and reflects back to the focal points. Second ray goes through the focal points. Even though it's hitting the mirror, if we extend this line backwards, like a sight line, it's going to go through the focal point. So we draw a line from the focal point through the top of the image and reflects uh, parallel to the optical axis. Now the image forms where these rays converge, but do you see these two rays converging anywhere? If you do, then you're crazy. However, they do converge on the other side. If we extend these, the sight lines, extend this line through the mirror, extend this line through the mirror, they're going to converge right here. And as I said, we're measuring it from the top of this candle. So where these two lines intersect on the other side of the mirror is going to be the top of the candle again. And you can see here that it's bigger. I'm sure you've uh, seen like funhouse mirrors, like this is how funhouse mirrors work. Like they make you look taller, skinnier, shorter, fatter. And this is a virtual image because it's on the other side of the mirror from the object. Object on one side, image on the other, you get a virtual image. So note, the mirrors are thin enough that you just draw a line, a straight line, to represent the mirror. Even though this is concave, you just draw a straight line as long as you remember the rules for concave mirrors. And it'd be helpful to label it concave too. So now it's your turn. I want you all to draw in where the object would be in this case. So you probably want to pause and draw it 
before you continue on. Or you could be lazy and just have me do it for you. So hit pause. So. All right, so back to this. Uh, here, I solved the problem for you. We can see that the first line we want to draw is a line parallel to the optical axis, bouncing off the mirror and then through the focal points. And keep drawing that guy. Second line we want to draw is starting from the tip through the focal point, bouncing parallel to the optical, optical axis off the mirror. And where these two lines meet, you're going to converge. And where they converge is where the tip of the new image will be. So we can see the tip is here, and now it's pointing down, and it's smaller. So is this a real or a virtual image? It's on the same side as the mirror, or sorry, same side as the object, so therefore it is a real image. So here's a little uh, cheat sheet kind of reminder thing, next couple slides. So for a real object between F, F the focal points, and the mirror, a virtual image is formed behind the mirror. The image is upright and larger, so it's magnified. So if it's between F and the mirror and a concave mirror, we're going to have a bigger virtual image. For a real object between the center of curvature, the real object is this one, and F. So between C and F, a real image is formed outside of C. So it's actually the real image can be behind C. It's going to be inverted and it's going to be magnified. For a real object that's directly on C, there's also going to be a real image formed, and it's going to be directly at C, and it's going to be the same size but inverted as the real object. For a real object close to the mirror but outside of the center of curvature, this time we're to the left of the center of curvature, there's a real image formed between the center of curvature and the focal point. The image is inverted and smaller. Now we're gonna move on to convex mirrors. And this is the last type of mirror we're gonna talk about. So in this case, light rays that come in parallel to the optical axis reflect from the focal points. So if you continue all these reflected rays back with sight lines, they're gonna meet at that focal point, just like that. So the focal point is considered virtual since sight lines, not light rays, go through it. So it's not a real focal point because only the, sight, the uh, sight lines go through it. Real focal points are ones that the light rays go through. So convex mirror, a quick little example. Here comes the light bouncing off. It's going to go that way. So the ray comes in parallel to the optical axis and reflects through the focal points. The second ray comes through the focal point, directly towards the focal point, then bounces parallel to the optical axis off of that. And we see if we continue these sight lines, they're going to converge on this side of the mirror. Is the image going to be virtual or real? Say it out loud because I know you like doing it and I can hear you. Creepy, I know. If you said it's real, you are wrong because it's virtual, it's on the other side of the mirror from the uh, object. So a virtual image forms where the sight lines converge. And here we can see in this case, it's a little smaller, but it's also upright. So this is a lot of the funhouse mirrors you're gonna see that are gonna make you look smaller and weird. It'll be all like wavy and stuff, and you'll see yourself uh, a little augmented. So now it's your turn. Hit pause again and draw where the image is going to be formed for this guy. And again, if you're lazy, don't hit pause and just continue on to the next one. But it's good to get practice. If this is what you drew, then you would be correct. Just like the last one I showed you, the example. Your first line, you draw parallel to the optical axis, hits the mirror, bounces off, and this line here goes through the focal point. The second line you want to draw is heading directly towards the focal point. So if we continue this on, it would actually go through the focal point. But it is reflected parallel to the optical axis. So if we continue this line, it's 
going to cross this line right about here, and we're going to have our image. And real quick, we're almost done. Lens and mirror equation, 1 over f, which is the focal distance, equals 1 over the image distance plus 1 over the object distance. Equations are going to be important. f focal length, d object distance, di image distance. So we have to be careful with signs here. F is negative for diverging mirrors and lenses. That means the ones that uh, don't converge, they diverge. And DI is negative when the image is behind the lens or mirror. We also have this magnification equation here, or M, which is the magnification number, equals the image height divided by the object height, which also equals the negative of the image distance divided by the object distance. Now, M is not going to have any units because this is going to be in meters. This will be in meters. Meters are going to cancel out. Going to have no units on M. Just going to be a number. So M stands for magnification, stuff I already said. So if the height is negative, then the image is flipped over. So if one of these guys is negative, then the image is going to be flipped over. If the magnification is negative, the image is inverted. It's going to be upside down. So if it turns out whenever you do any of these calculations that M is going to be negative, you're going to have an upside down inverted image. That's the end of part one. Now we're going to do a problem real quick, which is here. And I need to go back to the beginning. A little unprepared. Sorry. OK, here we go. A concave mirror has a radius of 20 centimeters. A 2 centimeter tall object is 30 centimeters from the mirror. What is the image position? So the first thing we want to do is write down our knowns, then write down what we're trying to solve for. So we know the object, is, or the object height, which is 2 centimeters, this guy. We know the object distance, how far it is from the mirror, which is 30 centimeters. And we know the radius of the mirror, which is 20 centimeters. But we don't know where the image distance is going to be. We don't know where it's going to end up. We don't know where this guy is. Pretend like all these lines aren't here for now. We don't know how high it's going to be. Alex Boyle. And Alex Boyle needs to go to the upper school front desk. Bad Alex Boyle. And we also don't know the focal distance. So the first thing we're going to find is the focal distance. Remember, focal distance equals the radius divided by 2. Maddie Peck, please report to the lower school office at this time. Maddie Peck, please come to the lower school office at this time. <sighs> Kids not knowing where they need to be. Sorry about that again, guys. I swear we're almost done. F, the focal distance, equals the radius divided by 2. We plug in our number for the radius. The radius is 20 centimeters. Divide that by 2, we get 10 centimeters. So our F, our focal distance is 10 centimeters. Now that we know that f is 10 centimeters, we're going to use the mirror equation to solve for the image position. Mirror equation, remember, is this. We have some handy dandy fancy algebra. We can rearrange it to look like this. Our image distance equals the focal distance times the object distance divided by the object distance minus the focal distance. Plug in some numbers, 10 centimeters times 30 centimeters divided by 30 minus 10 and you get 15 centimeters. So since this is number is positive, it's a real image in front of the mirror. That's important. Remember that, guys. And apparently I left a blank slide in there. But using the magnification equation now, we're going to solve for the image heights. Remember, the magnification equation is m equals hi over ho, which equals minus di over do. And we're going to solve for hi. So we're just going to forget about this m stuff over here and just use this part of the equation and solve for hi, which is easy. We just multiply this both sides by ho. Plug in your numbers. So we get negative 15.0 centimeters times 2 centimeters divided by 30 centimeters. And you end up with an image height of negative 1.0 centimeters. Now, this negative sign is important. It means it's going to be inverted. And therefore, smaller, too, because it's negative. And that is it for today. Thank you for watching this. Sorry for the length. And Cthulhu will haunt your dreams.